As we advance technologies, our thirst for energy goes up as well. It won't ever be lower than it is today, and coal, oil, or nuclear energy don't seem to be able to satisfy our future needs. So, in search of the energy we may soon lack, we need to have a closer look at our sun and our deserts. How much energy does humanity use? What unimaginable energy supply would we have if we transformed just 1% of the Sahara Desert into one big solar farm? And why haven't we done it already? Get ready to discover this and more about 173,000 terawatts of solar energy hits our planet non-stop. This number is roughly 10,000 times bigger than the amount of energy all human beings consume, and we hardly use our star's energy the way we should. In 2019, only about 2% of the world's electricity came from solar. Today we're using more than 17 terawatts of energy a year from all sources available to us, which is about enough to power 1.7 trillion light bulbs simultaneously. Unfortunately, we'll eventually run out of gas, coal, and oil, but solar energy isn't even going to disappear, or at least not for another few billion years. That's why it's called renewable energy. The Sahara Desert has a size of approximately 9.2 million square kilometers. This is about 8% of our entire planet's land, and since this area rarely gets cloudy and is bathed in sunlight for the biggest part of the day, the Sahara is our best choice to harness solar power. Just 1.2% of the Sahara Desert filled with solar panels would be enough to cover all our energy needs. So why don't we switch to solar power and harness our sun's energy to the fullest? The short answer is, it's not that simple. Solar panels absorb a large amount of energy that hits them, but just about 15% of that sunlight is transformed into electricity. Where does the rest of the incoming energy go? It escapes into the environment in the form of heat, and that's just one issue with solar panels. Building a huge solar farm in the world's largest hot desert would also lead to changes in the area's climate, and we're not only talking regional but also global effects on the atmosphere. One study showed that if about 20% of the desert is filled with solar panels, the effects would be felt across the globe. Why? Since solar panels and sand absorb light and emit heat differently, it creates a drastic temperature difference between the land and the surrounding oceans. As a result, huge amounts of moist air rise and condense into raindrops. Eventually, more plants will grow in the Sahara Desert, and with that amount of moisture in the air, the weather is going to change as well, making this area a lot cloudier. If this happens, the desert will become a habitable place. So, it seems there are only benefits to this approach, but that's not the case in reality. Our global climate functions as one big system, and if you ever slightly change one part of it, it could lead to a catastrophe. The global temperature shift, according to one recent study, could cause drought in the Amazon and sea loss in the Arctic. But that's only the way conventional photovoltaic solar panels work. The photovoltaic effect simply means the ability of matter to emit electrons when exposed to light. However, there are also other ways to harness solar power. One promising technology is called Concentrated Solar Power, CSP. The CSP system uses mirrors to concentrate sunlight at one point. This generates electricity by heating water, producing steam, and turning turbines. The process is similar to how coal power plants work. The difference here is that, unlike regular photovoltaic panels, CSP can store thermal energy, sometimes by heating and melting salt, and produce power even during night time. But there are drawbacks to this approach as well. Similar to how photovoltaic solar panels need to be cooled down to stay efficient, the CSP system needs to be cooled down to turn steam into water and begin the new cycle. And there's a huge issue with the water supply. Aside from cooling, more water is needed to clear mirrors that constantly get covered with dust due to frequent sandstorms. Particularly, CSP systems require as much as 3,500 litres of water per single megawatt hour. Transportation of energy over long distances is yet another issue. We'd have to build lots of electric grids, which don't currently function perfectly, losing roughly 10% of power until reaching the destination point. Sure, we could build high-voltage power lines and limit the energy loss to about 3% for every 1,000 kilometers but this would also mean more expenses. It would cost about $5 trillion to cover roughly 1% of the Sahara Desert with solar panels. 
and while it's a lot cheaper than the US national debt, it's still quite a significant price tag. So, if both these methods aren't ideal, why don't scientists approach this issue from a different angle? Scientists constantly work on new concepts, and they've actually found a way to harvest energy from invisible light. Researchers discovered that they could use oxygen to convert low-energy light into high-energy light. It means that a lot more energy could be extracted from the same amount of sunlight. With the help of nanotechnology, they could basically create photovoltaic solar panels on steroids. The thing is, the energy that comes from our star doesn't only consist of visible light. The electromagnetic spectrum is quite wide, and it contains ultraviolet light capable of burning your skin and infrared light that emits heat. Because the majority of solar panels are made of silicon, they're unable to respond to such wavelengths of light. However, a new design called quantum dot solar cell or artificially made tiny nanocrystals can, unlike photovoltaic solar cells that generate just one electron from one photon at most, quantum dots produce three electrons from a single photon. And if more sunlight is absorbed, less heat escapes into the environment. Aside from increased efficiency, this approach could also significantly decrease the cost per watt of delivered electricity. However, quantum dot solar cells are extremely toxic in nature, especially for the human body. Spleen, liver, and kidneys suffer the most. But that's not all the advancements that have been made. Researchers have broken new ground in collecting solar power with something called perovskite. In less than 10 years, the conversion efficiency of this next-generation material has risen from 3% to more than 25%. That's an incredibly huge leap, as similar materials need about 60 years to make such progress. The material is an extremely efficient light harvester, but what's fascinating is that when put on top of the silicon layer, it would absorb some light, converting it to electricity, but the rest will penetrate perovskite and reach silicon, producing even more electricity. While perovskites are still quite unstable, scientists may soon figure out how to solve this problem. Conventional silicon-made solar panels had a specific maximum efficiency limit of approximately 29%. By using layers of perovskite and silicon, this limit could be broken, reaching 39%. We may not have come up with the perfect technology to transform Earth's deserts into enormous solar farms, but we're surely on our way. And once we succeed, the whole world would have more energy than it could find applications for. This would open up exciting possibilities for the human race, so make sure you stay tuned here to keep up on the greatest human achievements. Don't forget to subscribe you know. Thanks for watching.